A lot of people are simply wasting their time. Look, if you want to burn fat, build muscle, and actually see results, avoid these next machines. These are the five machines you should stop using in the gym ASAP. Oh, we got a list five? Five. Oh, man, Jeremy five. just be setting us up these uh, days. I dude. know, I know. The <laughs> this guy, bro. All right, yeah. well, this guy, take away trying, your loves. Trying to you get know, us to before piss we, off. And there are, look, there are, there's always, there can be value to almost any machine or any machine depending on the individual. Um, but these are going to be the worst ones, the ones that yeah. we listed, the ones that tend to have the lowest value. But I think before we get to it, let's talk about why most, you know, experienced trainers and strength coaches tend to recommend free weights. Not always, not in every case, but in most cases, why free weights tend to be uh, better. Uh, I think the first reason, and I'll start, is just the real world carryover. Mm -hmm. When you lift things in the real world, they're not on a track, they're not attached to a cable, yeah. um, they're free. They're free floating. And so the the strength curve that free weights uh, work with, the stability that's involved, all that stuff, it carries over the real world because the real world is made up of, of essentially There's no guardrails. There's no like limitation yeah. of range of motion with this weight. Like you have to account for all of that with your stabilizing muscles and support and, you know, good posture and form mechanics. Well, you also have to consider when you are trying to do an exercise and you want the greatest bang for your buck. Uh, putting something on a track and limiting it to just the, the main muscle uh, that you're trying to work versus all the stabilizer muscles that have to kick in to stabilize a free weight, uh, you you lose out on that. I mean, there, there's a lot of value, especially when you're, especially during the beginning when you're trying to get good at this. We just recently had somebody in our GLP-1 group that was, uh, we were working with. Remember the lady that was using yeah. just the oh, machines? Oh, she was just using machines, yeah. Yeah, and we had her just switch over to shoulder presses with like light dumbbells and instantly felt the strength gains from just, yeah. and and was like wondering what, what why her body was shaking all over. Well, yeah, because it's been used to moving on a track and mm -hmm. none of those stabilizer muscles really had to work very hard to stabilize that machine. And now that you've had to do that, you're though all those are firing and working out too, which it adds to the the benefits. It does. And you know, again, just away from the aesthetic aspect, because a lot of the arguments always like you can still develop the same looking body, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe, but I you know, I would want one that feels yeah. better in the real world. I would want one that has more carryover if all things were not were dysfunctional. Equal. Not dysfunctional. And then here's the the here's a point that I don't think uh, gets enough credit. When you use a machine, that machine is designed, even if you adjust the seat and the arms or whatever, it's designed for a particular sized human being or range, mm -hmm. okay? Your body has to uh, form to the machine. Free weights form to you. So I'll use an extreme example. If you look at uh, physical therapy, they use free weight-based um, therapy tools. They use bands. They'll use maybe cables, which are more like free weights. And they'll use free weight exercise or body weight exercises because if someone's short or tall or wide or if there's an injury, whatever, free weights move with you. So it doesn't matter how long your arms are um, or how short you are, whatever. It's gonna, it's moving with you. Whereas with machines, you have to move with the machine. So there's oftentimes uh, I would get a client where if I had them use a machine, I mean I could see it just wasn't made for somebody their size, especially if they were petite or or really tall. And free weights are the other way around. I mean, yeah. I think you have to communicate too, like the the origin of machines too. Yeah. Mach machines were it was to limit yeah. stabilization. Yes, it I was. Mean, it was that was the the concept, and it was mostly for people that were rehabbing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because okay, if we have this person who just had knee surgery. Uh, and we want to isolate the quads so they don't atrophy any more than they are. Well, and they we have could, terrible lateral stability. Or they right, have, yeah. exactly. And so we could put them in this fixed position mm -hmm. and target just one part of their body so that we don't lose all that that muscle there and, and still can protect the, the knee joint. But in the context of a normal, average, healthy person who is trying to uh, build their metabolism, build muscle, lose body fat, uh, they're just inferior. I don't care what anybody says. And some machines, there, there's certain free weight exercises that are super valuable that you just can't mimic with a machine. Some you can get close to mimicking like a bench press or an overhead press. I'll make the argument though that free weights uh, are superior just from a stabilization standpoint. But like a deadlift or a barbell squat, there really aren't machines that mimic those very well at all. Now there's other back or you know posterior chain machines or... Uh, machines that can work the same muscles, but not the same movement. Like a deadlift is a good example. There is no deadlift machine that's going to be like a deadlift. And a deadlift is an extremely valuable exercise. 
Um, so, you know, there's just, for those reasons, free weights generally are better. And when I used to train my clients, you know, um, the goal was to be able to get them to do mostly free weights uh, with our workouts. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, we did, there is a criteria for how we determined which machines uh, suck. Um, and it starts, <laughs> it starts with high risk of injury, obviously. Yeah. Some machines, just the design is terrible and the risk of injury is kind of high. And then the second uh, part for criteria was that there's far better versions available. Like mm -hmm. there's just some machines it's like, why do that when you could do this over here? It is just so much better that this machine is, is pretty much a waste of time. So I, I think, and I think this is the most important point to be made about talking about machines. Cause you, you set the table with, you know, there's an, there's an exception to every rule. There's an example of where you or I, or one of us would use a machine with a client mm -hmm. or for ourselves for a very specific reason. But for the majority when you look at a machine, uh, as a trainer, I can instantly think of, you know, three or four or five other exercises that would get all the same benefits as that machine and more yeah. that I would rather use with my clients. So I'd rather exhaust all of those resources before I'd ever limit myself to just doing that. Unless yeah. I had a very special condition, like I pointed out before, of if a client that had some sort of an injury that I'm I'm concerned about. Yeah you know, them getting injured again. And so I want them in this fixed position. Other than that, if the main goal is the, one of the main things I said, which is build the metabolism, build muscle, burn body fat, which is typically most people, then I can look at almost any machine and go, that's great. But here's two or three other exercises that are better that, are better that we, sh we should do and master and, and, first. And some machines are just so bad that I almost never use them. In fact, the ones that we're listing here uh, these are ones that we probably never used with clients uh, for the most part. Yeah, you're just kind of scratching your head, like, where's the value here? Because mm -hmm. even if some of these machines, like, aren't necessarily something you'd put your client on for rehab purposes or, like, they had, like, a, a limitation uh, mm -hmm. and restriction for range of motion, th that's usually a way that I can justify using yep. them. But, but the other part is, too, does this actually, like, promote – a good amount like does it maximize a muscle contraction like that i can really isolate and focus on this muscle is it to do, do a good job with that like yep. but if it doesn't <laughs> now we're going to get into this category totally. now, now when you were drafting this list of these five uh i think if we, if we weren't planning on it we should also give two or three exercises to that that better point. yes sure yeah i mean i think that's part of it right not Great only idea. should we address the five that are not ideal machines, but just briefly tell you too, here's two or three examples of if you were thinking about going over and doing that machine, do, this. do one of these yeah. or do these two other exercises. Better options. All right, so the first one is, hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, we work with a company called Intera, Intera Skincare. This is peptide-based skincare products. It really, really works. You could tell within a few days. Go check them out, get 10% off. Click on this link over here, the pec deck. Now, before everybody gets you know angry, because I know that's one of the more popular machines in the gym, I'm talking about the pec deck where your arm is externally rotated. Yes. This pec deck right here is, whoever came up with this design, it's horrible. It's funny no. because when I was in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, one of the uh, first submissions you learn is called an Americana lock. An Americana lock, you're on your back, a guy's mounted on you, and they put your arm in this externally rotated position out here and they bring your arm back here, and that's how you tear somebody's shoulder. Yeah. And what's funny is we designed a machine where we're <laughs> literally that almost. you're literally doing you know you, you, you know what's called you know humeral uh, abduction and adduction while the humerus is externally rotated. This is a very vulnerable very position. Yeah. Yeah. Like e even if you're watching this, like try that yourself. Externally rotate and then bring your arm out, and you'll notice that doesn't feel good on the shoulder. Yeah. And yet we're going to put resistance. Uh, on that machine, it's uh, I, terrible. It's always always, always terrible. a sign. I know I'm in like an older gym when I see. Uh, yes, most you don't see them as often. You don't. I don't even know. True. That'd be an interesting thing for Doug to look up. I wonder if there's any companies that are still making these. <sighs> Do they still make them new? I don't think so. I think I haven't seen like a new hoist version or a new brand that's came yeah. out on the scene that has actually remade these. Most of these are gym owners that have had these yeah. forever and they just left them inside. I the think gym. people figured out so they suck. Was it just the thought was the person that was kind of coming up with this, that they could shorten the lever. So then for some reason, but you could still get that kind of same contraction. No idea. You know, it's funny. Yeah. So I, I never used a pec deck, this old school pet deck, the way you were supposed to. No, if I, I ever use it with a client, this. exactly. I opened. It. I would have them put their arms like this, and the oh, pad would be right on their face. Oh, look at, Well, That's those right. the ones on the right are are not. The no, ones on the, the left, one on the very left. Uh, Yukon that, fit. 
Yeah, that yeah. one's uh, that that uh, one's yeah. one. That picture looks like it's from the '80s. Are you sure that's still selling? It's, it's not like a picture from the '80s. Yeah. I've been to like a Golds or I've been a, a couple of places where they had them. Really? Yeah. And they yeah. were like newer uh, done because I feel uh, like look at all the I ones that are old. Going, they just all the ones that's going through right now are all the new versions. Yeah, but yeah. he's, those he's are also all... looking at home versions. If you do like commercial, then you'll yeah. Then maybe I, find I think one. it's an old. It's a kind of a dinosaur. Yeah. So so better versions. Well, I mean, a cable fly is superior, or a pec deck where the handles where you allow where you can grab the handles. <laughs> With your hands. Yeah. Now, there are some that shorten the lever where it puts a pad here in the crook of the elbow. That's fine too. But uh, any version of a fly, of course, dumbbell flies are great. Any version of a fly where your arm isn't externally rotated is, is going to be superior. Yeah, it's better. I mean, I, the, the argument I like, because I, I obviously we, we always make the case for free weights, dumbbells would be yeah. ideal. It is, it, we are talking about a different strength curve there, right? Where totally. if I wanted to match the strength curve, but a better version, it would be the cables. Cables. Yeah, cable okay. flies. Cable, right. fl cable flies, especially on like a, on a universal or a free, free motion, motion machine that you can, it contours like to cable your, crossover. yeah, your, mm -hmm. your body. Um, that would be a far, by the way, speaking of that crossing over, uh, you, uh, technically it would be to internally rotate and squeeze, squeeze and extend the arm forward. That would be the greatest squeeze on the chest. People don't know that, but the, the, the pec actually is involved in internally rotating the humerus a little bit. In fact, the, right. which the, I've seen people always turn the opposite yes. direction. Which is silly. Yeah. So what you're feeling when you go like this with your pinkies in, that's your pushing, biceps pushing your chest you're together, pushing your boobies in together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not, the there's more of a contraction with the way the fibers attach. To cause a little more internal, so actually a fly with the with the hands out here. Yeah, be, the ultimate even. cable fly. Yeah, is with the internal rotation, and then at the very end, a full extension of the arms and squeeze. Then like, you get that real. Big that would squeeze. be the that would be uh, following the same strength curve, better option yeah. than doing that. But machine, I don't so. mind. I use the pec deck all the time, but with the one with the handles, the one with the handles, perfectly fine. So long, okay. And if you can adjust the range of motion, so it goes a little further. Back. Yes, and so that you're not your your elbows are in line with your shoulders oftentimes you see people doing them in this fashion here yeah, yeah. and you're still externally rotating so the key here is not to have your arm yeah. externally rotated you while you chest. yeah that's you're asking for shoulder problems uh when you do that okay all right next are ab crunch machines mm. or almost any ab machine they've never made one that's great they're just all terrible and a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's hard to first off it's hard for people to understand how to do proper lumbar flexion yeah, yeah. and activate the abs to begin with. But then when you add a machine to it and you don't know how to adjust the seat properly, where do I place myself? Nine out of 10 times that I've ever seen someone use this, yeah. they are doing hip flexor. It's all hip flexor, uh, yeah, heavy. Heavy. Like, like it's very focused, uh, the hip flexor. Yeah, because even this position here yep. too, and, it, and you, you think that just by adding more load, that's going to help to really no. like enhance uh, that contraction with your abs, but you're not able to, to to differentiate between hip flexor and your abdominal. I mean, when I saw this on the list, it was really easy for me to get behind this because when I think back to um, exercise or muscles that clients had the hardest time engaging and working abdominals or, or far, yeah. far one of those. Yep. And anytime you have a client that struggles with activating any muscle, I definitely don't want to go over to a machine that, you know, kind of takes over a lot of the movement for them because they can't already connect to that, especially with the abs. Cause both the, the ab machine normally has something that pulls down or lifts up. If they lift up, it's all hip flexor stuff. If it's pulled down, it's all arm. Yeah. And the person's right. abs are completely like asleep. And maybe some of it they feel on the resistance after they come all the way down and squeeze. And so people get this people like, like, I feel the burn. I, exactly. They yeah. feel a little bit. But man, the things that you can do uh, with body weight and on the ground a physio for, ball. is yeah. so challenging yeah. that – the, I mean, if you can get to a place bench. where you can master dragonfly type stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. or, you know, in a, like an incline sit up. I mean, those are really, really challenging to do. You've got a pretty strong core and midsection if you can do that body weight. Stuff. So there's no reason to sit in a machine and load it that's yeah. not designed specifically for your body and try and, and work the abs. Yeah. So like, a, like a, for me, if I get in a machine as experienced as I am and I have to really concentrate and adjust my body and move it in a way to where I start to feel the target muscle, and it's taking a lot of mental effort on my part, I know that the average person isn't going to be able to use one properly. And this is all the ab machines, because I'll use them. I'll go into gyms. I'll see them. I'll try them out. And I always have to like 
finagle myself and move myself and really like really work on on lumbar flexion and extension and i'm like look i know if i'm having trouble yeah. hitting the abs average person isn't gonna do this right and of course when i see people doing them i actually i actually did just the other day because this is just the trainer in me like curiosity <laughs> exactly yeah this is yeah. i just i see one and it, maybe the they figured, hey, you know what it is yeah. it's like maybe they figured it out <laughs> uh, uh, no. but i find the same thing too is i i get in one of those machines and the you have uh, to make it work yeah yeah and, it, and a lot of that i'm just like this is so ridiculous like how much you have to focus to get the abs to really engage it's like i know i could have laid down or done an incline bench or a, a physio ball and got the same yeah. in better. fact you know one thing that i used to do as a trainer to get clients is i would see people using these machines oh, and they'd, yeah. st they'd use a whole stack and then i'd have them come over to a physio ball physio and i'd ball. say I, you yeah. know i bet you can't do 10 proper just physio ball crunches after yeah. they're doing a whole stack on a machine like that and they couldn't. Yep. Nobody could ever do it. Which, by the way, you want to talk about a good replacement. A proper physio ball crunch is exceptional. You get full extension, yeah. full contraction. And if you want resistance, lever. put your arms out, ab no. out above no. your head so you have a long lever. Don't swing them forward, but keep them behind, like, you know, biceps next to your ears. And and you're, you're doing, like, 10 reps real slow, and it's high resistance. You will build your abs with that particular movement, so long as you keep the hips up and in, in stationary so it's all lumbar flexion and extension yeah i would say that or i would say a, a decline sit up yeah. or a, rever sit -up. a reverse roll up a on reverse a crunch yeah, yeah, yeah reverse yeah. crunch yeah. on like an incline reverse oh crunch was my go-to to teach clients how to hit their abs because if you're laying flat and you do a reverse you have to hit your abs right, right. it rolls you up nicely yep. like that i agree I, and th that's a perfect example too of why this is such a better thing is like most people even if you're even talking about trainers who obviously know how to connect to their abs struggling on a machine why would i ever take a client over to a machine like that when i know there's other exercises that i know for sure they're going to be better connected and get a better now what's funny about this one so we talked about the pec deck one earlier and you probably you know they're not as popular anymore probably because they figured out that they weren't that great but ab machines always in gyms so you ask yourself why are they there people like them because it fools them into thinking they're training the core properly and they go over and they add more weight on the stack and it's like yes i'm Working my abs, you are not. You are working your hip flexors. You yeah. know what? Another point, just to keep bagging on the the ab machines, is they also are like you know, you. I used to see. I still see this. You still see people go over there and they spend like 10, 15 minutes mm -hmm. of their yeah, forty five minute hour workout, yeah. and you're talking about a limited range of motion on a machine that they can't connect very well. Talk about a really close to wasted 15 minutes yep, in the yeah. gym that you could come over and do one or two other movements. Inefficient. Far. So in it, so yes, inefficient. By the way, you just made me think, and also the range of motion is always terrible. It tends to be like this. Oh yeah. Yes. It's very it's small range. And of motion. it's yes. And, and it's just, if you could throw that machine away and you'd be doing a lot of people, a lot of favors. All right, next up, uh, tricep extension machines. So these are the ones. Now, we're not, I'm not talking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not talking cables. So cables are great. Uh, cables are great for triceps. Where your elbows are in the pad. Yeah, you yeah. get in the pad, and, you know, there's different version of this where your elbow, the back, and then you have to press down. Now, I can use them, but it takes a lot of concentration yeah. and a lot of finagling and moving my body to make sure it's in the right position. Most people simply yeah. can't. They don't. They don't know how to use them right. They get in there. It's it's awkward. It's very fixed. Your elbow has to be in the perfect position. Your forearm length yeah. has to be perfect. If it isn't, you have to know where to place your hands. And it's just simply not a great uh, machine for the triceps, especially when you consider the one hundred other tricep exercises that are completely superior. Yeah, I mean, this kind of speaks to what you are talking about earlier about you having to now kind of mold your totally. body into this uh, set position in order to actually get some benefit out of it. But, like, it, it, you know, to just do all these other exercises are already, like, immediately better, uh, like, to, to have you kind of form and try and make that work for this machine seems silly. Uh, during my series that I'm doing right now, the tricep extension is one of the, my favorite movements, and I'm doing a body weight version of this Great where exercise. I drop, dip my head below yeah. the bar. Yeah, yeah. You get long so, head stretch. You yeah, it just, I mean, I'm moving my body weight, so it's contouring to what I'm doing. I can elevate it up or down to control the difficulty. I can slow down the tempo. It takes it all the way to a fully stretched position. It's just such a superior and i think that's why this makes this one so bad it's not that i can't do a tricep extension machine and not feel like i've done those machines and i can feel my triceps but you're, just, you're experienced you know how to get in you know how to finagle it yes move it. right and it's just like and and there's just so many other better 
uh, versions of that with either body weight, cables, mm -hmm. free weights that you could do and, to and, get that. And the funny thing too is like at least half of these tricep extension machines, people don't, don't even know how to get into them because they're hard to get into. <laughs> they have to get their head underneath and yeah. pop it through. That's and true. then where do I put my arms? And oftentimes their arms don't fold enough to get underneath the, the pad. too high, you know, sometimes. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Look, are you lifting weights, eating a ton of food, and struggling. You're not packing on any muscle. You're not building any muscle at all. You're not getting stronger. Well, check it out. We have a hard gainer guide. This can be your ultimate resource to turn that around. Pack on some muscle mass with our hard gainer guide. It's totally free. You can get it by downloading it, clicking on the link in the description below. People have to understand too, when uh, your body will always default to like just moving the weight, right? It'll, it'll look at something like, okay, the idea is I move this thing forward like this, and then it'll take the easiest path to do that. And it, it's natural to push. Yeah, that's what it so, turns into. So what people don't realize they're doing, even if they think they're doing it right, is their, their shoulders Shrugging. are rotating and their chest is helping that movement. Very little of that is, is being isolated to just the tricep. And so even you using it somewhat proper and finding, finagling a way to get in there, uh, the actual direct work to the tricep yeah. is just minimal compared yeah. to other stuff. Now, superior uh, tricep exercise that's similar. I mean, any you could do this with a cable, and the cable is easy to get proper form in comparison. Yeah. Like, you could be tall, short, long arms, short arms. You get in position. You don't have to squeeze your head in anywhere. You grab a cable, put your elbows down in front of you. Boom, tricep extension. Same exact exercise way, way better. And of course you could do the free weight version, also known as a skull crusher or a French press where you lay on your back, you bring the barbell down, come back up. Like those are like some of the best tricep. And what's the reason why this machine, one of the reasons why this machine is here, it says you're also, it's not just a crappy machine, but it's also its replacement happens to be one of the best tricep exercises, which is a skull crusher. It's like yeah. one of the best exercises yeah, you yeah. can do. One of my favorite versions of this, if we're again, matching the strength curve, right? So it's got the tension on it the entire time is literally doing this standing up with a free motion cables behind me and actually one arm at a time where I, I oh, hold right my there. arm yeah. and I take it in the, in full range of motion and come all the way back with it pulling from behind me and oh, just yeah. being able to focus on one arm Isolated. at a time. And yeah. Oh, just, that's a, I get such a great pump from that exercise. Um, but yeah, the list goes on skull crushers, the body weight version. I was saying yeah. like, there's so many more things. You probably you never can. use the tricep extension machine. No, this so was like, one, no, around. no, definitely not for a client. I, again, the, the trainer in us, I'm sure we're all guilty of this. Oh, yeah. You see a new machine. There's yeah. a part of you that so wants the to high school kids with the broccoli haircuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're doing. That's what they're great. Yeah. All right. So next up, uh, most glute machines Ooh. are terrible well, gonna now there's the one glute machine hip that, thrust yeah, hip thrust that's right mm -hmm. hip thrust valuable yep. uh they're, they're great hip thrust machines are, are typically per, pretty damn they've good. actually figured out how to engineer that pretty well pretty too. well they're yeah. good um now but before that and these machines still exist you have like the donkey kickback machine or the one that's on the track with the one leg and it's like the biggest waste of time ever. I mean, you could do a lunge, you could do a squat, you could do a sumo squat, you could do a hip thrust, you could do a one-legged deadlift, you could do a deadlift, like all going to be way more effective at developing your glutes than this one little, you know, thing that you're doing with your Do you legs. think that's, okay, so there's a couple of reasons why. I mean, one, I think load is probably that. Yeah. Two, the glute is such a big muscle, The whole and the whole hip complex has so many stabilizer mm -hmm. muscles that are mm -hmm. involved that a good deep squat, it's so hard to compete with that. Yeah, it's it just is. so hard to compete with you putting some heavy weight on your back, getting all the way down into that deep squatted position. And then what the hips have to, I mean, I just, mm -hmm. and most people that are doing these glute machines are people that want to build their butt, right? That's Very right. few people are doing this for any other sort of corrective or rehab reason. So if your primary goal is to build your butt, Talk about a waste of time. It's of such a small contraction in comparison, you know, it's in terms of what you're going to get out of uh, your body to, to respond towards. It's like just that's why it's, there's so much volume, you know, that that keeps getting like, you know, perpetuate out there. Oh, we need to keep doing like these glute exercises like every single day, like 100 no. reps. Even well, this is this is the classic mistake of thinking because you feel or something burns. Thank you. Yeah, it is. I was going to say you'll feel more. your butt. Right. That this is a this is a classic mistake that clients would make, which is I feel it. It burns so much. I can feel yeah. it. It's like 
just because you feel something really well into a part of a muscle does not mean it is working it more or building it more mm -hmm. than these other exercises. And so I see, I still see this a lot. I see a lot of these kickback dog peas, the, the, the favorite one I see the girls do where they hook the cable on their yeah. ankle and they're standing there and they're doing these kickbacks. It's like, man, yeah. there is a whole bunch of exercises. If your goal is to build your butt. Now, if your goal is to, uh, add, just add some extra volume in your workout and you're already addressing all the big movements. Okay. I guess yeah. that's not and that you're big advanced and you're, you're just looking for more volume. Yeah, then maybe. And that's where you see some advanced people doing these, uh, is that they have such a high tolerance for volume. They're doing the hip thrust. They're doing the deadlifts. They're doing the squats. They're strong and they want to add five sets of volume that really is not going to cause much damage. Maybe get a little bit more of a pump. Sure. Well, then they throw it on, but yeah. could they get rid of it and it'd be hardly noticeable? Yeah. It's not sure. going to be that big of a deal. Could they get rid of deadlifts or hip thrust or squats? No. That's when you see a big difference. And right. even the, you know, people like Brett, Brett Contreras will say, this is how you add a little bit of volume, but this is not going to be the meat and potatoes. It's, right. it's so funny because uh, the last time I was at a gym and I was working at the the gym, there was this old lady that came in and her whole reason for coming in was this one machine. And she was like, can you direct me to where the booty blaster machine That's is? That's what it was called. I was like, booty blaster? <laughs> like, where is it? like, educate me. I go over and it's like, you have to like yeah, kneel like, down and you you kick back and like push yep. this yes. up on a track. And yeah. I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. That was the name of the machine. Yeah. It was yeah. called booty blast. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. Last up back extension machines. Now these actually have a high risk of injury for the same reason why the ab machines aren't that effective. People don't really understand how to work with their lumbar spine very well. You have to be very good with how you adjust your machine so that your body fits in it. And most people just get in there and start rocking back and forth. They love to add weight to the stack thinking this is going to strengthen my back and the substitutions for the, I mean, just the back extension off of a bench, like is superior, uh, uh to this. Cobra, yeah. Yeah. I just think that this is so, so it, it, protecting the low back, uh, core stabilization, hip flexibility, mobility, all this is kind of intertwined. And as a trainer, this is like one of the most important skills to teach almost all clients. And so to throw them in a machine uh, for a, an, an area of the body like this is it's irresponsible. It's just a terrible idea. It's like I, I would much rather teach my client how to body weight control themselves and mm -hmm. get the same type of movement out. I want to teach them how to hip hinge. I want to teach them how to engage their core and control these types of movements and throwing them in a machine is just a quick recipe for a disaster. It's like setting them up for potential injury for sure and minimal results. So yeah. it's minimal results, high risk. Yeah, not a lot of return. Not a lot of return yeah. whatsoever. The skill carryover of them getting good at that thing doesn't do much. You teach a client, though, how to actually hinge properly mm -hmm. or do That's back it. extensions, body weight. Like yeah. There's a lot of value and carryover into other training model or other training movements that we're going to do. So to me, this is something I would I would never yeah. do with a client now, or myself. You mentioned hip hinging. Like to do this properly, you have to know how to hinge. Yes. Uh, and people don't know how to hinge without resistance, let alone oh, being yeah. in a machine that they didn't adjust properly to their body. And so what this encourages is this kind of you know lumbar flexion and extension while loaded, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, mm -hmm. you can do exercises like that, but when you have good stability, if you don't, which is most people, and you load that. This is like disc hell. This is yeah, like you don't terrible. just jump into it. No. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely uh, prerequisites. No. Now, you know, good examples of replacements. I mean, you could do back extensions body weight. You could do good mornings that are loaded if you're strong and you understand how to hip hinge properly, a deadlift. Mm -hmm. Those are all going to be superior um, to a back extension machine for strengthening the low back. Hey, sorry to interrupt. It's October. MAPS Muscle Mommy is 50% off, half off. If you're interested, click on the link below. All right, back to the show. Got some questions. questions. What is the value of machines? Ah. You know, okay, so one of the things that people don't talk about with machines that I think is a value is that they don't cause as much stress on the body. Now, why is that valuable? Well, I'm glad you went that way. When I'm when I'm a little bit more fatigued, when I'm my recovery isn't, you know, as good as it could be for whatever reason, I can do a machine-based workout and it not hammer my body as much. Or on the flip side, I can do more volume if I'm going to spend more time in the gym using machines than I can with free weights. That, to me, is a pretty big value. Now, there's always arguments for you can isolate a muscle more, you can do this, that, and the other. Meh. I think it depends on the, you know, tell me the machine versus the free weight version, and then we'll have that discussion because sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not true. 
But from a damage perspective, I mean, I could do, you know, 15 sets of machines yeah. and it just doesn't it's tax really my a body. risk reward profile. Yes. You know, that you're I'm going to go through. I love going that way because I'm in the middle of this right now with, with documenting our whole series on YouTube with the transformation. And uh, what I end up shooting at least, you know, three to four videos with Dylan inside the studio, which are, I would say, the meat of the workout. And then what the what the series has not seen is because I'm not carrying a camera into my local gym, which I've done now. I think I count on one hand in two months. Uh, how many times? So four times, maybe I think I've been in it, three or four times. And they've been all machine workouts. And it's always been like the fifth workout of the week. Like yeah. It's like, oh, I can, I feel okay. Like I can go train something, but I still feel it a little bit from my squats the other day. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to do some real light, light leg extensions, leg curls, just almost like I'm trying to facilitate recovery more yep. than I am trying to do any sort of damage or push really hard as I can still feel my body is still recovering from the last barbell workout I did. But I do want to increase a little bit of volume. I, I find a lot of value in machines for things like that and or very specific situations where I have, a, like I said, like rehab, where I have a client or myself is nursing an injury mm -hmm. and I want something to be in a very fixed position so I can target a muscle and not risk that instability somewhere else. Yeah. But again, even if you're not going in and trying to go easy, even if I went to failure on a machine, you know, going to failure on a chest press versus a bench press, way less damaging. Yeah. A row on a machine versus a barbell row, yeah. way less damaging. An overhead press, way less damaging. It's just sometimes I'll use a lot of machines if I want to increase the volume, not do as much damage. Why? Because I want to spend time in the gym, get a better pump, whatever. Or because it's time to scale back a little bit. And one way to scale back is to go from free weights to machines. So I think there's some value. Next question is, what are your favorite machines? Oh, good. Ooh. You know, I like, this, this. we've talked about this before. I love the pullover machine. Uh, uh, that's, not old that's Nautilus pull, pullover machine. It's one of the few machines that is superior to its uh, to uh, other versions, and I've never I've never really found a machine I like as much as that one. Yeah, I like um, what's it called um, the the ones that um, oh my god, come back to me! I don't remember. I, the name of them. So I hammer like, strength. I mean, yeah, I, uh, the are, hammer strength. Yeah, I was thinking, cause, so, cause, yeah, because they're plate loaded, and yes. then you have like a fixed track, but it does feel a little bit like it's the in between. Yeah. of uh, free weights. Uh, and two, like, and really for me, it was the the rowing ones, especially. That's yeah. where I was yeah. going to go. I love the hammer strength row That's and good. the chest press. Both the, those those machines that well, give you the feel of a machine. And with what they weight. did is they aligned yeah, the independent arms. What, yeah. they, what they did, the engineers of uh, hammer strength, um, and I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken, I think Arthur Jones' son invented hammer strength, if I'm not mistaken. But it, 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 they lined it up with the action of the target muscle. So like with a traditional chest press, your hands stay straight, right? So you get that humerus coming across the body. Let's pet contraction. What hammer strength did is they got the hands to come closer mm -hmm. as you pressed out, giving you more of that yep. range of motion. Really smart. And then the fact that it's plate loaded, uh, that helps with the you know how it feels in terms of the resistance because free weights feel different. It's not the same consistent resistance all the way through. Yeah. And I guess too, I mean, free motion will count, right? With the yeah. cables. But I really, I just feel like you can, you can get a really nice strength curve that way. And it feels like it's, it's pretty close to, to doing you something know, with free cables weights. Cables are funny. I almost put cables with free weights. I really do. It's because close, of the versatility yeah. and it's just, anybody can use them. It's, it's, just, it's just close. Range of motion is pretty, pretty great with those. Plate loaded versus weight stacks, is there any difference? Yeah, you know, uh, when the plate loaded machines first came out, I remember this was in the 90s. Before that, the, all machines were weight stack. Hammer Strength, one being the most uh, popular one, came out with plate loaded. And plate loaded, number one, the way they engineered the machines was really cool in terms of the way that the handles would move and all that. Um, but the second part is with the, with the free weight, as a free weight moves through gravity, it's not the same weight all the way through, right? Mm -hmm. So if I take like a barbell curl that's 50 pounds from the starting position to mid-range, it's not 100% 50 pounds, right? Because I'm not going directly against gravity. It's only 50 directly against gravity, which is in the midpoint. And then it gets a little easier as I come up. Plate-loaded machines give you a different feel. They feel kind of like free weights. And so what the engineers did is they said, how can we get the benefits of machines with the feel of free weights? And they got 
pretty close. They did really well. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of I, a hybrid. I tend to like the plate loaded uh, machines more than the the ones with the weight stack. Yeah, you know, I don't know necessarily if I if I categorize this as like a either or. I think it's uh, they're different. Um, Any time that you are manipulating the strength curve in an exercise, you're creating a novel stimulus. Mm. So if I was training, and I like, so I like both for different reasons. So if I've been training plate loaded hammer strength machines a lot, cause I like those, if I was using those, uh, and I hadn't done anything that with weight stacks, then would, you would go over there and do that. But they definitely, uh, change the strength curve to your point about when you are moving those plate loaded machines, like to Justin's, uh, row machine, he brought up when you first pull that thing, you are, you are pulling all that weight. Once it gets all the way up to Easy. here, it's yeah. like, you could like hold one finger and it will almost balance the weight up there because of where the weight is now distributed mm -hmm. on that. So that gives a different feel and kind of uh, emulates what it's like to move free weight through space where plate loaded, even when you're all the way in or out of the exercise, same. it's the same. And so it's going to have this kind of consistent. Oh, still pulling. Unless they change the cams, you know, they're getting really good with machines now with engineering. Yeah. Well, they'll put different well, cams and stuff on it to, you know, pulleys. Those so that it interesting feels ones. Was it uh, Ben Pikulski had the, uh, where you could load at the top or the bottom yes. part yes. of, uh, even it was plate loaded, yes. which was, I thought that was like a really interesting twist. Yep. What is your favorite cardio machine? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I mean, if, I, if I had to pick, uh, well, I mean, I would use a treadmill because it's a versatility. I, I like the elliptical, too, because it's so easy on the body. I, yeah, I was going to say. But treadmill, like anybody can use a treadmill. I mean, I, yeah. you're going to find you're gonna find me on a walking incline on a treadmill if you find me in a gym using a piece of cardio equipment 90 plus percent of the time. Yeah. I like elliptical as a trainer because I've trained so many clients that had chronic knee pain and hip pain and issues. And so yeah. a zero impact type of cardio machine that they can still uh, burn a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that, or get their cardio endurance up, I think really well. I so elliptical has always been one of my favorites. Have you guys used the ones that are kind of curved? Yep. yep. Yeah. That mm -hmm. are, yeah, self, uh, I don't know what you call that, but like you have to the like- The treadmill? You well, you have to like, the momentum starts you. Propel you propel it. You can you propel go fast it. on those too. Yeah. Like I love those. those. Those were fairly new. Like I wish we had those, you know, when I was training back for athletics. Uh, but between that and I actually really like the assault bike if I'm going to do conditioning. If you want VO2. You know, oh, conditioning, it, yeah. dude, there's nothing really that no. gets me more than that. Or a Versa Climber. Versa, <laughs> Versa Climber is yeah. another one, dude. Yeah, I'll do you, that. You, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll party then, with that. A favorite among bodybuilders besides... Stairmaster. Yeah, a Stairmaster yeah. besides a treadmill. Um, <clears> jump the, rope too for me. Is the step mill. That's mm. with the rotating stairs. Uh, oh, yeah, You see yeah, a lot yeah. of bodybuilders will use that yeah. where they're just kind of constantly... Climbing stuff. But if I had to pick one, when I, when I had my studio, I had a small studio, so like I couldn't put tons of cardio in there. I had one elliptical, one treadmill, and the treadmill is what I, I used, you know, most of the time with my clients because anybody could walk real slow. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the most used. All right, I know you like that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat for men. This is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible Six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.